is good, everybody? Welcome to episode 38 of the Yinzers podcast. I'm your host, Morgan Arto, here with my co-host, Jordan Figio and Samantha James. Guys, it's been like two weeks since I've seen you. Yeah. What's been wow. going on? How are you guys? Um, All right. Yeah. Breathing. Yeah. Breathing. That's a, That's a win. Good descriptor. Yeah. Listen, I'm proud of us if we're breathing. So let's chalk it up to yeah. a win and jump right into the episode. It's the off season. We don't have yeah. a ton going on. We don't have a lot to talk about. It's not like we're like – can't wait to get in here to talk about all the juicy Steelers gossip because there's mm-hmm. not a lot. There's not a ton yeah. going on. But what did happen since the last episode is we hired the one guy, the one guy who I was like, oh, I would love to have him on our staff, but there's mm-hmm. no way because he's going to be a head coach and we're going to have a head coach for the foreseeable future in Mike Tomlin. So like, no way we get this guy. Um, And then on the other end of the spectrum, a lot of people thought, okay, yeah, he's totally blackballed from coaching in the league, at least for a while, at least until this Mm -hmm. lawsuit has settled down a little bit. But we brought in Brian Flores as a defensive assistant. Guys, what is that like? atrocity that he's an assistant number one he should be a head coach in this league he is a good coach he's a good head coach Mm -hmm. what he has done in Miami what he did in Miami was something not a lot of coaches could do and he did it and Mm -hmm. what happened to him is you know we can't we're not going to speculate because the lawsuit is still pending that's going to be a full go number one I love that the Steelers made the move even with that pending lawsuit Mm -hmm. love that number two I would love to see this evolve into him being a defensive coordinator. Uh Um, Again, I think that he is inevitably gone next year to be a head coach once again, because that is truly where he belongs. But what are y'all's thoughts on the Brian Flores hire? I think Sam, I love it. Oh my God. Yeah, Sam. Love it. Fucking love it. First of all, I was like, I have no hope for the season. Like I've just been drowning in my own sorrows thinking about what's going to happen. And I was like, oh, my God, a bright light. That's Brian Flores. Like, is that our savior? I don't know, because the fucking defense. Uh, talking about our yeah, freedom. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Mm-hmm. It genuinely felt like it bre- It was a breath of life mm-hmm. into this team, not only the defense, into the team as a whole, because we had been making the moves that no one wanted to see made. We retained Matt Canada, we promoted from within. We promoted mm-hmm. Terrell Austin to defensive coordinator. It was all of the inevitable moves that none of us wanted to right. see. And no one saw the Flores hire coming. I mean, mm-hmm. truly, we've been speculating on, oh, who's the quarterback going to be? And who is the wide receivers coach going to be? And there's been speculation here and there on these coaches, on the offensive line. Like Those are the, the positions that we have been speculating right. on. Brian Flores didn't come into the conversation at mm-hmm. all. So it goes to show yeah. you how much these media rumors, like how much weight they actually carry because where was this speculation? Jordan, what are your thoughts? I'm I'm really excited about it. I don't necessarily think that this means that it's going to turn the Steelers season around per se. I do think that it – is going to provide some upswing for players who looked like they had bottomed out, potentially Devin Bush. And honestly, so we we all know how qualified he is, Brian Flores, and he should be a head coach somewhere. But selfishly, I'm like, maybe um, – we can just hold on to him for a while and promote him mm-hmm. from within. Now, like yeah. now that we finally have a guy who is worth promoting, right. I'm like, yeah, you keep right. him and promote the shit out of him until Mike Tomlin right. leaves. Exactly. And then he can become the head coach. And that's a pipe dream. But I am very excited that he's part of the the staff especially on defense because there was just such a breakdown in the middle of the field over the course yeah. of the last couple of years with the exception obviously of TJ Watt. So I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with Devin Bush and I'm really looking forward to seeing how he can continue to progress Alex Highsmith and his development. Like I just 
I think there's going to be a lot of positives that we see from this. And it's, it's, you know, the season is going to be what it is. And I don't think the Steelers are going to have a losing season, but I also don't think it's going to be, they may miss the playoffs. And honestly, I'm Mm -hmm. okay with that. I think that they need to just kind of ride out the mediocrity while they don't have anybody who can really make it gel for them to explode into the postseason. But uh, it's all about the building blocks for them right now. And this is a major win. In terms it of is a blocks. perfect place to build a foundation, right? Mm-hmm. Like this hire, number one, it was pretty inevitable that he wasn't going to be coaching this right. year. Mm-hmm. Like I know he was pursuing opportunities, but people thought, okay, like let's chalk this up to Brian Flores. He's not going to be coaching this year because of this pending lawsuit, right. because of everything, all of the everything that's going to come along with it. Teams are going to be scared mm-hmm. to touch a guy who you don't know what's how things are going to go. Like, you know, I don't agree with that logic because I think he is 100% within his right to do what he did. I think the dolphins were 1000% in the wrong in that situation. So dude, go for it. I just fucking love the statement that it makes and the light that it shows the Pittsburgh Steelers organization in. We -hmm. can complain all day about the moves or lack thereof by this organization, but this was something that I feel so proud of them for accomplishing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have no qualms whatsoever with him pursuing this lawsuit also just amazing. I'm so excited. And I think like it gives, yes. And I think it's going to weigh into like his decision to stay potentially. I don't Mm -hmm. know, Sam, what were you saying? That too, like hopefully like maybe some loyalty, right? Like, Hey, Mm -hmm. give me a chance when no one else would also on the flip side of it okay for other teams like if the Steelers were willing to like risk take this risk and hire Brian Flores like that may be a stepping stone for him getting back into a head coaching position that he does deserve yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. he 100% deserves it and the reaction Mm league-wide from players and not only minority coaches but a lot of minority coaches and some white coaches, I'll just be blunt, mm-hmm. um, some non-minority coaches, the the reaction was so positive. What mm-hmm. it told those players is we're not scared of, you know, w- fall, le- of being who the league thinks these organizations are. We're not scared of proving yeah, that we're not. Right. And mm-hmm. if you want to pursue a coaching position when you're done playing – you have a spot, you have an opportunity here. We're not going to run from it. And I fucking love that they made that statement. Um, Mm -hmm. I just think he was, he was very clearly hired for his abilities Mm -hmm. as a coach. And I just, I couldn't be happier about it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, Jordan says, you know, we might not go to the Super Bowl. It might not mean much. I say Super Bowl 100%. Thank you, Brian Flores. (laughs) And next, Um, let's talk next about since free agency is coming up in March, mid March, we have free agency hitting, and this will be the first year in a long time that we have capital. We have the money to spend in free agency. And if they don't, I mean, are you going to be surprised? No, not really, but we have the money. So like, let's, let's do something with the guys. Like we have a lot of holes that we need to Mm -hmm. fill on this team. And we have a lot of free agents who are potentially walking. I don't want to talk about who are we going to run out and get? I don't want to talk about like potentially who we're pursuing in free agency necessarily, but I do want to talk about our free agents, our existing players who are going to be free agents come March and who is the priority to maintain. And I want to go by positions. So we're going to start with the secondary. Um, free agents back there. And I'm not going to talk about everyone, but I'm going to talk about the guys who have made a name for themselves on this team. Um, So first we're talking about secondary. That means Joe Hayden, Terrell Edmonds, Arthur Millette, and Akella Witherspoon. Guys, 
What are your thoughts here? This is the toughest group for me to like That's kind of hard. mull through because I mean, Edmonds had a prolific year, his most prolific to date. Um, Arthur Mollette was a force. Sam was on that train from the jump. Joe Hayden had his first down year with us, lots of injuries, um, mm. but it's Joe fucking I Hayden. Know. So like that's tough already as it is. I just, just love I him. love him. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Akella Witherspoon, when he finally was given a role, my God, the dude was lights out. So let's talk about it. Jordan, who do you want to keep? Who are you okay with letting walk? Mm-hmm. And what are we willing to pay these guys? I'm not sure any of them would warrant breaking the bank. And Maybe they would be like, I would be most inclined to say pay Joe Hayden just because of his locker room presence and the fact that his down year was mostly due to injuries. It wasn't Mm -hmm. so much uh, just because of his performance. There were some injury issues and every single guy on the team was dealing with injury issues last year. It felt like. Absolutely. Is his age a concern for you? A little bit. Oh. And I guess, like, because we have so much cap space, his age is less of a concern for me. Like, I, if if we're, we were having this conversation last year, um, this same situation with this that cap space, I would probably say, yeah, age is a concern, but. I don't, I don't really know. It's so tough because like Terrell Edmonds did have a really solid year, but I have a feeling he, and I, I think I've said this before. I have a feeling he's going to ask for a lot mm-hmm. more money than he's worth I agree with that. because he did make, he made a pretty big jump in terms of where he was when he started his career Absolutely. and where he is now. And that's definitely worth noting. And he's, he's worth having on the team but I just don't know if he's going to price himself out of Pittsburgh based on overvaluing himself because he was so bad at the beginning. Right. And, and now it's, he's it's not. It's interesting with Terrell Edmonds because it's so similar to what we saw with Bud Dupree, right? Like mm-hmm. we saw Bud really progress somewhat later in his career with us. And it was in large part due to the presence of TJ Watt, right? Mm -hmm. Like TJ was able to elevate Bud Dupree's game to such an extent that his market value just skyrocketed. And inevitably we lost Bud in free agency. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what we're looking at with Edmonds because Minka has done the same thing with Terrell Edmonds. He has really allowed Edmonds to elevate his game to the next level. And whether he will pull that kind of money, he's not going to pull the same kind of money Bud Dupree did, not by a long right. shot, but whether he'll pull the kind of money that he thinks he will, I don't think I don't think yeah. those numbers are going to match up. So that's a very and good that point. could yeah that could be the case as well. He may ask for so much that other teams aren't willing to pay it either, and he right. will just inevitably stay in Pittsburgh. Honestly, so I think my my feelings on the secondary would be pay a bunch of good players a little bit less so that you have more depth. Because again, I really don't think the Steelers are going to be super competitive this year. And again, I'm, I'm fine with that. Take this time to figure out who you want to be moving forward because their identity has just been a huge question mark the past handful of years. So if you can retain some of the younger guys like Mollette and then maybe even Witherspoon who's proven that he can perform well when given the opportunity, like, and then maybe pick up a couple of other fringe players in free agency or even draft them. Like just, just get the depth because there were so many injury issues across the field last year. Like you just, you need, some depth and you need solid depth. So I, maybe that would be my answer. Like let somebody more expensive, like Joe Hayden, who is older walk as much as we love him uh, in favor of keeping the younger guys and keeping a few more of them. Yeah. And I, you know, Edmonds is the only safety on that list. So Mm -hmm. like maybe that lends him a little bit of leeway as far as what we would be willing to pay him. I do know that. Yeah. 
We didn't give him that fifth year option because I believe the Steelers wanted to see what he was really made of when mm-hmm. push comes to shove. Like this is a contract year for you. Show us who you are. Really? Show us yeah. who you can be. And he did that. So we'll see, Sam. What are your thoughts on these um, four guys? Joe Hayden. Worried about injuries, obviously. Um, but also on the flip side, he is such a huge veteran locker room presence. Depends on what he's asking for. I mean, to be honest, mm-hmm. if he's asking like top of the range salary again, it's like, I don't know if you're worth that anymore because age. And will he get that anywhere else? Like, I don't know. I don't know if he will. And the other thing is like, I think that like Witherspoon 100% is worth signing just because of what we did see this off or this off season. I agree. The other thing is there's a lot of actual like big free big name free agents this offseason like Jesse Bates. Um, I know Tyron Matthews up in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, Jordan Whitehead like there's some big splashy names. And so I feel like that's going to drive the market hopefully price down for what Edmonds would be. Absolutely. That's a very good point. It's uh, secondary is also so hard for us. Like we do not draft secondary. Uh, We can't draft Mm -hmm. it. We Mm -mm. cannot draft the positions. And so it's like when we had these guys like Witherspoon who just came in and kind of shock and awe for everybody, I feel like you retain them. And I'm not saying break the bank for them, but like you find something that works and you stick with it at that position because I know Mike Tomlin, you think you're this defensive-minded genius and potentially you are if the secondary isn't Mm -hmm. a thing. Yeah, (laughs) But like unfortunately in the NFL, it is. So it's, yeah, kind of a big deal. We need to be careful there. Um, I I can't even answer this question. Like I don't even know. I, I don't know, but I do think Witherspoon is my number mm-hmm. one that I want to maintain, and that is a lot for me because Joe Hayden, like special place yeah. in my heart. I just adore yeah. that man, oh, Joe. So. Let's move on to the receiver position. We have three big ones that are free agents. Juju once again, James Washington, and Ray Ray McLeod. Um, Obviously, Ray Ray kind of came into the wide receiver position a little bit like midway through the year. Um, But if he leaves, that that leaves the return position open as well. Uh So what are your thoughts on these guys? Sam, I want to start with you. I I think that we keep Ray Ray which I'm not stoked about because I don't love the way that he returns. But I think James Washington is gone. I don't think that he stays. Mm -hmm. He was pretty vocal in some ways about not being happy with his playing time in Pittsburgh. And I actually don't see Juju coming back this year. Um, I was pretty optimistic. I mean, we all were last year. Like We were spot on when everyone was telling us we were wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. My gut this year yep. tells me that he's not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan, what about you? Mm, that, that just feels right. I think that there are a lot, not maybe not a lot, a number of other teams who might be able to offer him a little bit more and also offer an opportunity to win now. Mm-hmm. And I think that, the combination of those things is going to take him away from Pittsburgh and Ben's not here anymore. So that, I think that definitely did, it did play play. A, it was a factor in why he returned to Pittsburgh to begin with. And yeah, I have, I, I feel like Sam kind of, kind of nailed it there, which is unfortunate because Ray Ray is just very mm-hmm. underwhelming, but he's mm-hmm. not, He's not really that – they don't need him as a receiver, <laughs> so they are fine to just toss him in right. in the backfield for a kick return. Um, and James Washington, uh, okay. Like he was probably the Steelers' most consistent receiver, which doesn't say much because he only touched the ball like once. Uh, yeah. Uh, every six games, Mm -hmm. but, and I don't know. I think that there's a lot of this team that just needs to kind of be cleansed a little bit. And the wide receiver room is probably one of the things that needs to just kind of have a, it just feels a little bit stale. It Mm -hmm. feels a little bit stale. Like, listen, 
I'm going to say that every single one of these guys, all three of them, whether they stay or whether they go, depends a ton on the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact we get a good quarterback, Juju stays. Mm -hmm. I promise you he does. If we get a quarterback who is a proven winner, Juju staying. Um, James Washington and Ray Ray, I could see them more inclined to stay if Mason Rudolph is our starting starting mm. quarterback. Ray Ray had his best game with Mason throwing footballs. Yep. So, uh, and James Washington, obviously, they go you know way back Oklahoma State. So, <laughs> fully dependent, all three of them on the quarterback position. I don't think yeah. that the Steelers have their minds made up on any of them yet, and I don't think any of them have their minds made up on the Steelers. So that is yeah. just fully dependent on who we bring in to throw footballs and. I'm not even going to speculate on that because who knows? I would yeah. say like, say we get someone like Jameis who had a very good year before he got hurt last year with the Saints. We get Jameis. I could see Juju maybe staying around for that, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, mm-hmm. Jameis likes to throw a lot and he likes to throw deep. And if Juju wants to be that big deep threat that he was when AB was around, then mm-hmm. I could see that being a thing. Um, also, no None of these guys really love Matt okay, Canada. I was so say, I was like, but on the if it's up side, to anyone, <laughs> we've heard. if it's up to anyone, if it's up to them, you know, they're going to, that's a, that's a big weighty factor there. Go so rogue. Yeah. Go rogue. don't listen to Matt Canada. Right. Yeah, exactly. You Just turn your headset off. Sorry. Back turn back your head. Off. Whoever our quarterback <sighs> is, give me a call. We have a, we have a game plan for you. Yeah, um, we'll moving you. on to Eric. Ebron, I think we're probably all going to be on the same page about this one. But yeah. Sam, let's start with you. He's what do you gone. think? Get him out. Agreed. Jordan? Yeah. No no reason to keep him, I think, between There's Pat not. And, uh, and the emergence of Zach Gentry. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. By the way, who, when, how, that was – I mean, he, cut, he plays like Pat. It's yeah. so funny how Pat comes yeah. in and then you see Zach Gentry really emerge into this player who plays a lot like Pat Fryermuth. It's yeah. very mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. Pat and um, Zach together all the time. Yes. Like they are buddy. Which, yeah. Whatever. Um, it makes a difference. Yeah. It does. And I, I like yeah. Eric Ebron as a receiver mm-hmm. when he's not struggling with catching the ball. I like him as a receiver. He's just not a physical enough guy. Mm-hmm. And at the mm-hmm. tight end position, you need to be physical. If you want a guy to play the tight end position – and be physical, and be a really good pass catcher, move Juju to tight end. That's all I'm going to say. Next, we're going to talk offensive line. This is the bane of our existence. We're going to start with Chooks, Trey Turner, BJ Finney, and JC Hassenauer. Do we want any of them No, get rid of all of them. Seriously, get – do not spend a single cent on any of those guys. I'm with you. I'm sure they're great, wonderful people, but they do not – deserve to no. make to take up any of our cap space like they no. they've not proven that there are guys to build a line around and that's what you're doing now like you like they the Steelers should have done that last year but they did a very piss poor job of it so you tr- this this was an experiment you tried it failed yeah. let them walk start over like you can start over you're, yes. you're good and we have enough guys who are just off their rookie contract who are still, you know, have a lot to prove on that line. So let's uh-huh. get some proven, solid veterans around yeah. them. Let's yep. not cheap out at this position. And if it means drafting, trading up for draft picks uh-huh. to solidify that line, do it. I don't want to see a single dime wasted on any of these four guys, the best of which was JC Hasenauer. And that's not saying much. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really not. Depressed that that is like we are looking at those four names, and you're just like, wow, that's that's the top like, of the name. Like, I mean, at least that's yeah. money that we don't have to be spending on them. So, like, yeah, be gone, Miles Killebrew. Interesting one for me because he's listed as a safety on the roster, but obviously he's a special right. teams guy. And I believe yeah. he was one of the most effective special teams guys that he we really had was. last year. I say we have to keep him. What do you yeah. guys think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because special teams has always been an issue for uh, every team. Every team struggles to find guys who are good at playing those special teams positions. And when you find one who actually seems to give a fuck and does it well, like you got to hold on to him and 
I, I think that they need to do what they can to keep him because he's worth having yeah. on the team. Right. Yeah. And we saw that we really felt the loss of losing Ty- Tyler Matekovich. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's like, okay, if we can maintain a guy who's actually a playmaker on special teams, like do it, be done with it. He's not going to cost an arm and a leg Yeah, and move on. Lastly, I want to talk linebackers. We're talking Marcus Allen, Robert Spillane. Are either of them, Marcus Allen with his like weird injuries and like sometimes playing and sometimes not and and Robert Spillane, you know, who's been splashy at times, Marcus, but yeah. especially the way that he's utilized in our defense, it's not really giving us anything. And if we're going to talk about depth, are they really the guys we want to pair De- Devin Bush with? Like what are – just lay it all out for me, Sam. Uh, Marcus, Allen's, Marcus Allen, I would be like up in the air about. Like if he – depends on yeah. his price, I'm going to be honest. Because, again, we, we still need some depth. Robert Spillane, absolutely not. He's had Facts. the Jordan. one like train hit and then exactly yep. like he's had like one or two splashy that plays. Yeah, that was when his fifteen minutes. Station, like it's gone. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, none of us bought yeah, tickets. That. Next, Mm-mm. Jordan. It yeah, I, I I just keep coming back to like the Steelers paid the the one guy who was worth paying Mm -hmm. like they gave tj watt the money that he deserved basically everybody else on the roster is kind of a question mark to me like i for the for the most part that's a very sweeping generalization but i just with the direction the well the fact that the franchise is so directionless makes me feel way less inclined to keep any of these guys because I, it just feels like you need you you've gotten all cute and thought nothing was going to hurt you and you were mm-hmm. going to be fine and you bounce back either way okay you ran the experiment and failed. It, it, they all failed like they just all failed yeah so you and i don't think that anybody from um kevin colbert to the coaching staff really believes that either of those guys is an answer to any question that they have. And I uh, think they were fillers. I think you're yep. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. They were just filling just a position. Yep. Field. And that's I mean, we great. had so many injuries at that position the year before last. So like, yeah, that's, you know, what their role was, but continue. You were but, still speaking when I interrupted you. No, you're fine. It, it that was just pretty much, the thought is just like, eh, I, they aren't really, they're not meeting a need anymore. And it's not worth trying to figure out how to fit them in the cap to, to keep them yeah. for what, for, to what end, like just let them go pile up your money and then figure out who you actually want and then go get them. It's so funny to me to talk about f- for, for this team where there were so many obvious issues, so many obvious holes. Like it's funny to talk about, okay, who do we want to keep? Because my heart says like, oh, like I love this player and I love this guy, but my my head says fire sell the team. Yeah. Like yeah. get rid of everybody, like mm-hmm. start fresh. Um, but there are a few guys on this list and in our free agent list that – I do hope that we at least think about keeping yeah. um, majority of them, though, you know, box to the left. So yeah. um, <laughs> I hope it looks like almost a completely different team next year because they. I, so- I'm with you. I'm ready to just like cut those strings, cut the ties and, and bounce. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I guess that's all we have because yeah. it's off season, guys. And. Not a lot is happening, but if you want to send days. us some more mean tweets, we can we can do that because yeah. that got a really, really good response, um, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. But let's wrap this thing up really quickly. It has been real as always, you guys, even in the off season. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget to subscribe, whether it's on our YouTube channel or wherever it is you listen to podcasts so that we can kick it every week. We'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Winters. Bye, guys.